Y2K. Anybody remember Y2K? Anybody know anything about Y2K? The basic idea on Y2K was that for convenience, all these computer programs when it came to do dates, you only needed two numbers. Why use four numbers when you only need two? And then they recognized what date is the computer going to think it is when we get to 2000. One simple date change for man, one major screw up for computer. But, so really what I, what, the point I'm really trying to get here is like sometimes we think about the end of the world. What do we want to get to get ready? What do we want? How, well, how do we get ready, right? And so, sometimes we'll think, what can I get? But I think Father, Father David really uh, summed it up tonight, man. It's not really about what you get. It's how you get ready for it. It's about what can you give to get ready. That's what Jesus calls us to do, right? He tells us to give to the, to the poor, give to the needy. And that's how we get ready. Okay? Every one of us in the room, this room has plenty to be grateful for. And I try to keep gratitude in my attitude every day of my life. Even though I couldn't even walk today, I got a bum knee. That's not gonna stop me from being happy. My window got busted in my new car when I come out to come here. You know what? It was a little distressing, but I still come here with joy, knowing that God's got my back in all that happens. That's God's car anyway. I tell him to pay for it. <laughs> Much of our understanding of the second coming and the events preceding it come from the book of Revelation. Oh my gosh, Revelation. So we're going to get there. Because of its heavenly symbolism and bizarre imagery, it can be really confusing and difficult to understand. There are beasts full of eyes and seemingly slain lambs with seven horns. So I'm going to read a couple passages out of Revelation. And I'm going to be honest with you all. I read more of Revelation today and yesterday than I have in a whole year. And... It's kind of scary, kind of confusing, but really interesting. So I'm going to go to chapter 12, the woman and the dragon. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and upon its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. What are they talking about there? I mean, this is stuff out of fiction movies you would think but this is our bible our beliefs our, our scripture it's not all understood by me and i don't think all of it's understood completely but the more that we do we delve into our faith the more we can understand what some of this means and i'm not a theologian and you know i just work on motorcycles i don't have time to to study and research all that and a lot of you won't either and some of you will i pray but it's the understanding that to know that the second coming is coming and that we have to be prepared. Also, I want to talk about the bowls containing plagues that poured out into the world. This is also some bits from Revelations. The, imaginary, the imagery of the end of the world is pretty frightening, both from Scripture and from modern depictions. Some of what uh, you were seeing on there, Y2K, and the different movies that you see that depict the end of the world. Just think about the latest apocalypse movies. Who would have wanted to live through that? We didn't have any problem talking about injustices in the world. But through all these injustices, we need to find gratitude. Because we know that God's got our back in all that we do. And we are all truly blessed in the country that we live in to have our faith and not to be persecuted for it is something that we can all have.